Tina Tiainen. I will be your host today. Getting a tattoo or piercing for the very first time can be scary. Well, have no fear. This video will give you all the tools you need to navigate the process so you can go home with body art that you can love for a lifetime. It's Tattoos Day here at Tina Tiainen TV. Today we've been invited to Rubber Monkey Tattoo Shop where we are going to get a crash course in tattoo and piercing safety. Rubber Monkey Tattoo, that's the name of the shop. You should only ever get tattoos or piercings that are done by reputable, licensed professionals that are trained in their field. Some regions don't have any laws whatsoever about tattoos or piercings, so you have to take initiative to make sure that your tattoo artist and studio are up to par. The more prepared you are, the better decision you'll make. So do your research. Explore the shops in your local area. Find out what the customers have to say by checking out online reviews. If you see someone who has a tattoo that you like, ask them where they got it and who did it. You want to know all the good artists in your area. Visit lots of body modification shops before you settle on the best one. When you visit a tattoo or piercing shop, the facility should be clean. It should be evident that great care is taken to make sure there's a sanitary environment throughout the building, not just in the lobby. And it might sound strange, but have a look in the bathroom. You can tell by the cleanliness of the bathroom whether or not they're cutting corners, because if they cut corners in the bathroom, they probably cut corners in other important areas as well. When you walk into the shop, you should be greeted by an array of licenses and certificates on the wall. Ask to see their licenses if they're not in view. Also, when you look at their licenses, make sure that the dates on them are current and valid. The state inspector comes in to inspect the entire shop and then every artist will have their license and then every shop should also have its own permit as well. Okay. And what was that one? State Board of Health. Okay. Inspection. Cool. Make sure your parlor is certified. Yep. Every <laughs> shop um, is required to have the really State Board of Health inspection. For okay. obvious reasons, sanitation, make sure that the parlor just up to snuff and doing everything right, making sure that people aren't going to get an infection or anything scary and crazy. Cool. <laughs> Do they normally have you fill something out? Is that a consent yep, form? We have a consent and release form that's filled out by everybody for piercings and tattoos. Um, for tattooing in the state of Iowa, we must be 18 years old, and in the state of mm -hmm. Iowa, it is um, for piercings, it's 17 without parental consent. Okay. The studio should meet all of your local health regulations and requirements. Do an online search before you go so that you are familiar with your local laws. If the facility looks clean, then go ahead and get to know the artists. artists will keep up to date on all the industry health standards and they will continually seek out education and training. At a minimum, they should be trained in bloodborne pathogens, first aid, and CPR. Ask them if they have any special certifications or training. It's a good sign if your piercer has certification from APP, or the Association of Professional Piercers. This means that they're bound by a strict code of health, safety, ethics, and quality. Piercers who do not follow APP code get their memberships revoked, so it's a good sign if you see an APP certification that is current. Also, have they won any awards from tattoo conventions? That's usually a good sign. And while it's not legally required, it is a good idea for your protection and theirs that they are vaccinated against hepatitis B. And never trust what anybody says just on their words alone. Ask to see documented proof of their vaccinations and certifications.
And if you're looking to get a piercing, remember, never let a piercing gun touch your body. Piercing guns, like the ones they use at malls to pierce little kids' ears, cannot be fully sterilized. Piercing guns can harbor blood-borne diseases such as hepatitis, which can last on a contaminated piercing gun for several weeks. Also, piercing guns, they don't use a sharp needle to go through your skin, they use a blunt jewelry end that is forced through your skin. This causes unnecessary damage and makes healing very complicated and more likely to get infected. Always seek out a professional piercer who uses sterilized needles. Also, a good rule of thumb is if the place doesn't actually do piercings and they only sell jewelry, they don't have a lot invested in making sure that that body jewelry is of quality. They don't care about your piercing, they're just trying to make a quick buck. So only get your body jewelry from places that actually pierce as well. If you want to get special piercings like microdermals, make sure that your piercer is trained and knows what they're doing. Never buy cheap body jewelry. Even if it claims to be high quality stainless steel or surgical steel. Piercings, uh, make sure that you're looking at the jewelry, what, what type of uh, jewelry it is, whether it's high polished or not, um, internally and externally jewelry. Most internally jewelry has a uh, higher quality of metal. Only accept implant grade surgical steel for your body jewelry. Why? because hazardous nickel salts from low quality steel can leak into your body. If you want to get technical, the only kind of steel that you should use for body piercings is called 316 LVM ASTM F-138 or 316 LVM for short. Body jewelry providers have a metal cert or a mill cert, which is a document provided by the manufacturer. It states what kind of steel the product is made from. Once again, you want 316 LVM, which means it's implant grade steel. If a place does not have a metal or mill cert, they probably aren't too invested in your health and they don't care about the success of your piercing. So make sure you only go to reputable piercing stores to buy your jewelry. When you're buying body jewelry, ask if they sell internally or externally threaded jewelry. If they don't know the difference, that's a bad sign. You have to be very careful with the externally. There is step-down jewelry, which has the, the ends of it are smaller than the gauge itself. So there's no way of tearing, like it following through the needle, you're not gonna rip your skin. There are some externally jewelry that has the threading as the same size as the post and following it with the needle would, with the ridges on it was going to tear your skin. Internally threaded jewelry is the best because it gives a smooth transition for jewelry. The barbell has a female end and the threaded or male end is on the ball so it won't interact with your piercing. Externally threaded jewelry can cause problems because the barbell has the threaded male end. Having the threading at the end of the barbell can tear your piercing from the inside as it goes through. Step-down jewelry has smaller threading than usual, so the threading isn't as likely to irritate, especially when using a needle. However, your best choice is to go with internally threaded jewelry. There are places where they will pick it up off the front glass and then go take it back there and pierce it. Nobody should be touching your jewelry. Nobody. Make sure that they have gloves at all times. Make sure they're changing their gloves. Every time they touch something, they need to be changing their gloves. You don't want any sort of bacteria or anything when you're doing a piercing. Tattoo and piercing artistry requires no formal education. It is built upon apprenticeship and experience. When you're interviewing your artist, ask about their experience. How many years of professional piercing or tattooing do they have under their belt? Ask what styles a tattoo artist specializes in. You're going to want an artist that specializes in the type of tattoo that you want. This is especially true if you want a portrait tattoo. Portraits are the easiest to mess up, so if you do want one, make sure you go to someone that specializes in portraits. Request to see photos of your artist's previous work. 
you're gonna wanna see photos of actual healed piercings and tattoos because a lot can happen from the time it's done to when it's healed. So you're gonna wanna see the final result. All artists should have a collection of their work gathered in something called a portfolio. A portfolio shows all of their past work so you can get an idea for what kind of quality and consistency an artist has. Portfolios are usually located in the lobby of any tattoo or piercing parlor. If an artist doesn't have a portfolio, go somewhere else. Run away. Because you need to be able to see what kind of work they've done in the past to know what kind of work they're going to give you. Be aware that it has happened before that a bad tattoo artist stole portfolio pictures from a good tattoo artist and passed them off as being their own. So if you doubt that a person actually did the tattoos in their portfolio, ask to see them do work on another client. This way you can know whether or not you're getting the real deal. As you browse their photos, pay attention to the details. Are their lines smooth or are they blown out and uneven? Do they do a good job blending color? If everything checks out good so far, then go ahead and ask them about their equipment and their sterilization process. Body modification artists should be more than happy to show you that their equipment is clean and sterile. This is where we sterilize. Every studio should have an autoclave in it with certification for their equipment. Autoclaves are medical grade machines that use extreme pressure and heat to sterilize objects such as needles. If they are reluctant to show you their sterilization equipment, then take your business to a more professional shop. Avoid any place that tries to use a kitchen canning pressure cooker in place of an autoclave. It's not the same thing and it will not sterilize needles, so do not go to a place that doesn't have an official medical grade autoclave. Also, the room that houses the autoclave should be in clean condition. If it's not, that is a bad sign because the autoclave is supposed to be used for sterilizing medical equipment. Just because a place has an autoclave doesn't mean that they're using it right. So ask to see a recent spore test within the last two months to ensure that the autoclave is in working condition. All needles should be brand new and in unopened autoclave bags that have the date labeled right on the front. When you're getting your piercing or tattoo, make sure they're showing you the, the needles. Usually they're in pre-packed, you know, pre-packaged and it has the date or they might sterilize it right in front of you. Um, e either, either way is good, but if they're not showing you needles and dates and that uh, they have been sterilized, you should definitely not go there. In some states, it's not a legal requirement for a tattoo or piercing shop to use new needles. They will allow these places to use used needles as long as they're properly autoclaved. However, that is not a good practice because dull needles can cause very bad skin damage, so you want to use new needles every time. Here's how you tell the difference between a new needle and a used needle. A new needle will be shiny and silver with no stains. A used needle will probably have some ink stains on it and it could even be somewhat brown in color. Anything that touches your body or gets used on your skin should be immediately thrown away after your tattoo is done. Nothing should be reused or returned to an original container after it's already been out and used. This includes stencil pens, markers, razors, ink caps, leftover ink, and petroleum jelly. Basically, anything that touches your body during this process will be considered contaminated and have to be thrown out. Stencil pen, awesome. what's up with that? This is a stencil pen, I use this usually. Um, you throw them away after you've used them, or like for this person, he's getting a, a sleeve, so I'm using the same marker on the same person, otherwise you should not be using them. Uh, the same marker as the other person because of biohazard. You can uh, use them for piercings as well to mark it. Again, make sure they're thrown away, not using the same pen. Anything metal that's going to be reused should be considered contaminated, so it should be autoclaved before the next use. Sterile tattoo or piercing needle should be opened from an unopened autoclave bag directly in front of you right before you begin. The bag should not have been pre-opened and it should be free of any punctures, tears, stains or wetness. An autoclave bag that has been jeopardized is considered contaminated and should be replaced with a sterile replacement. To ensure that the autoclave bag is sterile, look on the front of it. 
there should be a symbol on there or the name of the brand of autoclave bag. And these are only going to show up dark when it's been properly autoclaved in the right temperatures. The date that the bag was autoclaved will be written by hand on the front of it. You're going to want to make sure that the date on the bag is within six months of the date today so that it is still sterile. Making sure that they are sterilized needles, prepackaged, they do the fire right there. We usually show that to all of our customers on all of our needles. Once needles are used, they should be properly disposed of in a designated sharps container. To prevent cross-contamination, the artist should always be wearing medical grade gloves that fit properly when they're working. If they're too loose or too tight, it could cause holes or punctures. Gloves should be changed each and every single time that they come in contact with a non-sterile surface. This means your tattoo artist or piercing artist should not be handling cell phones, food, drinks, drawer handles, or scratching themselves, or touching anything other than the tattoo site while they are working. Any surface that's going to be touched and reused by the artist needs to be wrapped in plastic to avoid cross-contamination. This includes the tattoo gun as well as the bottle of rubbing alcohol. There's a tradition of using plastic wrap or saran wrap to bandage a tattoo after it's been done. However, this practice is vastly becoming banned across many tattoo conventions as well as becoming illegal in some states. This is because plastic wrap is going to trap the heat and moisture in the tattoo area. That means it's going to become a breeding ground for bacteria. Sometimes the temperatures can get up to 103 degrees trapped inside of saran wrap if it's on your body underneath the wound. So you do not want to put plastic wrap on and have them bandage your tattoo with a proper medical bandage. What are some additional resources you can check out for more information on piercing or tattoos? www.safepiercing.org has all the information you can have about what to look for for getting a new piercing and it also has like the different parts of the body and act here, I believe. All right. Well, thank you very much, Gina No. You're the best. <laughs> this concludes part one, how to choose a safe tattoo or piercing artist. Stay tuned for part two, how to design a tattoo, body modification tips, and aftercare. Share your own tattoo and piercing knowledge or questions below in the comments section. Move your cursor right on over to that like button and give us a thumbs up. And click on my skeleton lover to subscribe.